live from the Fox 43 studio. Your late news an hour earlier. This is Fox 43 News at 10. Nearing the finish of a great American tradition. Emerges an American tragedy. There's a lot of factors playing into what happened today. Next, Fox 43 News talk with a local explosion expert. Back now on Fox 43 News at 10, we are getting a unique perspective about IEDs from a local expert. We went to York County and asked if the U.S. could ever be adequately prepared for such attacks as those we saw in Boston today. Uh, when I retired from the military um, a couple years ago, several veterans and I determined that there was a, a, a gap in the, in the process out there, that there was no private sector entity uh, other than uh, government organizations that was specifically designed to go after the global IED threat. And there was a significant lack of awareness. So we formed a, uh, a group that's currently uh, all volunteer, no paid employees, to mobilize the global community against imp the threat of improvised explosive devices. And as part of that, to support our veterans who are the victims of IEDs. I mean, other than Afghanistan and Iraq, there are over 500 IED incidents uh, a month in the rest of the world outside of Afghanistan and Iraq. Uh, a lot of people also don't know that the very day of the, the Newtown shooting, a, uh, a student was arrested in Oklahoma for planning to blow up his school. And they, thwart, they thwarted that attempt. Uh, according to the Joint IED Defeat Organization, the U.S. is ranked uh, among the, the top ten, close to uh, the top five, in, within the top five of countries in the world with the most IED incidents within our own borders. Uh, main target is schools, and uh, one out of every three arrests for an IED improvised bomb related incident is a juvenile. Well, my first reaction was I was uh, both uh, well, obviously concerned for the folks there because I know what they're what they're going through, but I was uh, uh, there was a lot of disappointment after all of the the efforts to raise awareness of this issue uh, over the past couple of years that uh, have, has been brought to bear in Washington with trying to get uh, actions in, uh, out and, and going to increase our readiness, that uh, it would take an incident like this uh, to, to kind of bring that to the forefront. Uh, but the, our, you know, the greatest thing is the concern for the folks that are there, not just for their initial injuries, but for the long-term impact of this. Uh, well, I've gotten uh, a, a lot of interest, of course, from, from some organizations and some, uh, some folks in different sectors that kind of didn't have a lot of interest in it before are now calling up and asking questions, and it's kind of like folks are, are in some areas are acting surprised that this could have happened, and it really had. I mean, September 11th, perfect example. The plain September 11th were the largest IEDs ever built. Um, you know, but... It, one thing you'll notice until recently, uh, we didn't ha we didn't even mention IEDs in the United States. We didn't have an uh, we didn't have a vehicle-borne IED in Times Square. We had a suspicious device that was found, and so to a large extent, we we're, we're now getting some realization that it not only is it happening here, but it can get much worse. Uh, you could tell. I mean, there's some of the signatures. Uh, just based on the video of what the blast was, but also when, you're, when there's an accidental explosion, there aren't multiple incidents at the same time. I mean, that was uh, just, just on the surface. Of course, we won't know and the public won't know until the folks who are charged with doing this do a, an investigation, and I, I wouldn't want to get in front of them like so many people will in the, in the, in the coming days of trying to pontificate on what happened. But when you have two simultaneous IEDs go off like that, it's a pretty strong indicator that it was a, it was a planned attack. Fortunately, uh, at, at this point, the casualty count is, is low as far as the dead. Hopefully, it won't, it won't rise, but we got very, very lucky on this. Well, the first thing we did, uh, of course, was raise awareness because we've actually sat down with, with some folks in some congressional offices and also in the private sector, uh, in, in companies and, and other areas that have told us that they at first believed that they didn't understand what we were going after because once the U.S. pulls out of Afghanistan and Iraq, IEDs will stop because they wrongly believed they occurred there. Uh, you look at the, the Norway incident, the, in, the individual who detonated that bomb before he shot those people, 
publicly went out and said that that IED was his quote unquote press release to get attention. And so we took off on a, uh, a kind of a three prong approach. Uh, the first one was to raise awareness of it, and then we got 93 members of Congress to sign a letter to the president calling for a comprehensive strategy on IEDs for the United States, which you know currently doesn't exist. Um, the second thing was support to veterans and veterans uh, that are are the result of IEDs. Uh, you can see TBI, and there's a link from TBI into um, into all kinds of problems, and it tends to just be pushed off onto PTSD. I mean, there's a link between TBI and, and suicides. The third piece was to start a global information campaign to get the global community to understand that this is not a U.S. problem or a U.K. problem or a Western problem. This is a global problem, and it's everybody's responsibility to go out there and deal with it. And part of that is to, once you go after the networks, you have to go after the networks way upstream and remove the root causes of how they can recruit these, uh, these people into these networks. And then you prosecute them as the criminals that they are, rather than give them any special status as terrorists and let them have a, have a platform. Uh, and that's, that's what we went after. Uh, we had 93 members of Congress sign a letter to the president on that. Um, the member who led that went back and um, didn't get a very good response, sent it back and said the response was, uh, uh, was not, uh, not up to standard. And the other thing that we're, we're still calling for, and that in fact we called for again today, is a United States resolution from Congress condemning IEDs and for the U.S. to go to the United Nations because a lot of people don't understand that the United Nations has never had a, con a resolution condemning IEDs. Um, they do one every year for landmines, but they never do anything to condemn IEDs. And while a lot of people may say, well, that's just a piece of paper, what they don't understand is a lot of the UN organizations will not respond. And a lot of these countries and these terrorist groups, uh, and also these radical organizations, will hide behind that. And once the global community signs up that says they condemn them in the trafficking in IED uh, precursor materials, uh, ammonium nitrate fertilizers, you know, you, you name it, uh, then there has to be a unified response, and it takes the burden off the military. Because we believe that is, this is not a problem that should only be focused on the military. Um, you see now in the U.S. what's happening up in Boston, the people that are at the tip of the spear for this are the first responders, the police or the firefighters, and they need the equipment, the training, and the best practices to be transitioned over for that. So what we had heard today is that there, there may have been other devices. Again, we won't know and we, d we don't want to speculate, but that's all part of what happens with these events. I mean, the people who, the, the criminals, and that's what they are, who do this, um, get more fear into the population by the speculation and concern that there are other devices out there. And now in the coming days, what you'll probably see is folks who, will, unfortunately, will take advantage of this to try to try to scare folks of more bomb threats and more things like that. Yes, in fact, uh, right now we've got a project going where we're trying to uh, raise funds to bring a, a young lady to overthrow our parent organization, Partners International Foundation, uh, to get donations to bring a young lady over from Nigeria to get uh, a replacement leg. I mean, a really sad story. She was a uh, graduate student learning humanitarian relief so she could go over and try to solve some of the root causes of problems in Nigeria was doing her last interview for her master's degree. Her last interview was at the UN compound in Abuja. She went there the day it was detonated and lost a leg. Uh, we've been working with the Blinded Veterans Association, another really great organization, uh, and AMBETS, on dealing with the, um, uh, what's happened with the sight and the vision loss, and also the traumatic brain injury. I mean, there's uh, about 200,000 veterans out there or more who have vision loss from low-level TBI. And in the coming days, you'll see a lot, and there's a lot of publicity will be on the physical injuries, not just the, the, loss, uh, the loss of limbs. But a lot of these folks will have serious hearing loss. Uh, they'll have low-level uh, to moderate traumatic brain injury. Uh, there's been instances where soldiers have come home, never been treated for a traumatic brain injury because it's such a low-level, uh, low-level repetitive, like football players, low-level repetitive exposure. And uh, they lose some or all of their vision suddenly within, you know, a couple of weeks, or they can't concentrate. And, and so the, the, the real problem for these folks is going to be what happens as, as we go down the road, not just with the, 
the physical injuries, but more, more importantly, the, the, the hidden injuries. Uh, it'll be a long road. One of the biggest problems that, that you have that we have been pushing for is that, um, I mean, put yourself in the position of these hospitals and the folks who now have to treat these people. Um, you don't have a lot of blast injuries uh, outside the military. And the military has spent millions of dollars in the defense budget, and anyone can look it up, on medical research into blast injuries, which is not being shared with the Veterans Administration and with private sector organizations. Uh, we even have difficulty with the DOD providing unclassified information on IED events around the world. And so as a result, the medical professionals that have to deal with these folks long term need access to that data. And that's one thing we're, we're calling with other uh, with veteran service organizations calling for is for Congress to, to come forward and, um, and require the sharing, this open sharing of unclassified information. And that's what's going to be needed for the... Yeah, you did. I think the biggest thing would be that uh, the U.S. has to understand that I, this, this is not an isolated incident, that uh, this happens every day. You look at Pakistan, you look at uh, Thailand, any country in the world. What we experience today in the U.S. happens everywhere, every day. And it's not just our problem. This is a global problem. And we need to mobilize the global community at the community level against this. And the, the biggest difficulty we have, because we're a small, all-volunteer organization, is we don't have the publicity or, the, or the, the big payrolls to go out there and put a lot of ads on TV. So we're you know, we, we do what we can. I mean, I'm doing this out of my military retirement, as there are a lot of the other veterans. Um, but the biggest thing is for folks to be very vigilant and to call for action, not only here in the U.S., but call for the global community to take action on this and for their congressmen and senators and everybody in Washington, because this is an issue you can unite on. You're either for IDs or you're against them. There's no middle ground. We should ourselves by the grace of God how lucky we were today with the minimum number of casualties. Um, the loss of one human life is tragic and inexcusable, but this is the opportunity now to say we're going to come together, not only as a country, but we're going to come together and get the global community to come together to work with organizations like ours and others and stand up against this before the next time when, when there are uh, greater casualties, because we can stop this.